to make sure we know all the ins and outs of how to negotiate housing and all the intricacies that has just come down with the CARE Act. Number two, car payments. So if you have a car note, if you have a lease, uh, that's a whole other webinar about car loans and why we probably shouldn't take them. But if you have them, fine. Uh, those are the two things we need to prioritize because we need to live and we need to move around. Then we have our bills, so utilities, cell phone, cable, all that jazz. Then insurance, and then credit card APR. So I often, BC, pre-Rona, um, would go out to events and would ask everybody, like, who's negotiated their APR? So if you want to chime in in the comments, like, have you ever called the credit card company and negotiated the interest rate with them? If you have not, you'll never forget your first because it is time to do that. It is all negotiable. Even if it comes in that fancy envelope, it's negotiable. You just have to get on the phone and start asking. So all of this stuff really takes some chutzpah, which is Yiddish for moxie. And you just have to remain calm, but know exactly what you want going in, stay super focused, and then tackle those subscriptions. So first with housing, if you have a mortgage, then the CARE Act puts a moratorium on evictions and forbearance, so no payments for 180 days um, if you have a federally backed mortgage. So what's up, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac? Um, you can also ask for another 180 days. I know you did that math really quickly, and that's one year. Okay, and then also in addition to that, New York, Jersey, Tiffany, um, California, they have their own thing. You also want to go, I know it's like alphabet soup here, uh, when it comes to all the different agencies, but HUD, FHFA, uh, that, what does that stand for? A federal Housing Finance Agency for the win. <laughs> uh, but I have all the links in the worksheets that you can go to the specific pages because I know sometimes these websites can get confusing and sometimes they've been down as well, but you got HUD there. Um, that you can check out some specific information if you're not actually sure if you have Fannie or Freddie. And here's the thing, when we're having these conversations of trying to get down because during low interest rate times, rock bottom interest rates, great time to refinance. Also a really great time if you take advantage of some of what's coming out of Washington to ask all the questions. So make sure you know what happens to those payments. What happens to the length of the mortgage? Taxes, like you need to know point by point. Don't just say, thank you, I'm not paying, goodbye. Um, what's the lump sum due at the end? And then crunch those numbers. Like just get into a mortgage calculator, just figure out if this is actually gonna be a good deal for you. And if you don't have to take it and it's not gonna be a good deal at the end, then don't take it. If you are renting, so if you don't know Fannie and Freddie, um, it's really important to call your landlord if you haven't talked to them already. Ask for an extension in payments. Ask for a hookup. You know, bill collectors, including your landlord, are going to throw you a bone versus losing you. So if they think that they're going to get nothing, they're probably going to give you something. Um, you can offer to pay for half if they won't budge. You can offer to pay your security deposit that you've already paid as rent. There are all sorts of other tactics that you can come up with um, to try and get them to budge. You can also remind them how responsible you are and how amazing your credit is and how you've been on time. Here's a little sample. Uh, of course, edit it as you like. But something like, dear landlord, this is a hard time for all of us. The pandemic has negatively impacted my work as a freelancer, please kindly consider deferring my rent for three months while the world recovers, and so does my income. So be super nice. Um, as you know, I've been a responsible tenant, have good credit. I'm currently applying for aid and grants. It gives sort of an explanation of what's going on with you. I know that mine and the world's finances will improve soon with payment timetables back to normal as quickly as possible. Sending you all the warm wishes. Hope everybody's safe and good. Um, and if I can help in any other way, let me know. Thank you very much. So that's, you know, I think one of the biggest impediments is just getting started. And I can tell you as a writer, it's so much easier to edit than to write. So take this, even if you change all of it at the end, at least we're starting somewhere. At least we're taking the first step. We're taking baby steps to the finish line. Um, the next thing is those car payments. So 
again, prioritize the car payments, the home payments, because we have to live and we have to move. And without them, we can't do that. Don't freak out right now over your credit score. Uh, forbearance is not going to be, um, you know, super often necessarily. Late payments is going to be worse, but we're going to fix that. Right now, we are in a pandemic. It is raining. You know, when they, we all talk about, Tiffany talks about, Grandma talked about a rainy day, but it is raining right now. Like, it doesn't rain forever, but there is a downpour. So be gentle on yourself. We'll be able to clean it up. We'll be able to get that debt monkey off our back if that happens. Um, think about what your insurance is like and if this new normal changes that. Because car insurance is, as you know, really determined by how much you're driving. And if you're not driving to the office, then those miles are not accumulating. So you could probably get lower car insurance as well. Uh, check out jdpower.com for specific brands. I don't know all of them, but I've checked them out. You can look at Acura, you can look at Toyota, whatever car you have, they're coming out with special coronavirus car plans. So make sure you not only see what your specific car company is doing, but also check out the others because that is going to be your biggest leverage when you call. Tiffany, I need you, baby. Can you role play for me? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be us, the person asking for a hookup, or do you want to be the car dude or lady? Can you read the other side of this? What do you think? so excited. Did I lose you? Okay. Well, I'm just going to talk to myself. No, I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had it on full screen. Oh, look, I didn't think, like, did she go potty? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm here. All right, so, so you want me okay, to be, I don't know who, you know. who do you want to be? Um, you could be whoever you want. Okay, let's see. Um, I think I will be the rep with a little sass. <clears throat> right. Okay. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, how? This is, um, you owe me money, car payments, um, <laughs> who am I asked to speaking? Hello, you owe me car payments. I am Nicole, and I just wanted to talk to you about my payments because my financial circumstances have suddenly changed, of course, because of the coronavirus pandemic. I'm newly unemployed, so I wanted to know what my options would be for adjusting my monthly payment. Well, I do see that your next payment is due on April 20th. Fourth, I could change the date of your next payment to May 15th instead to help you. You know, thank you, uh, but I don't have any guarantee of unemployment benefits coming through my PIN or a stimulus check. Is there any way to get a payment extension? Is that possible? Oof, I'm sorry you're experiencing hardship, but everyone is asking for help, and I just can't authorize that right now. You know, my friend that uses this other uh, owe me money car lender ha or has a car with your competitor's company, they're going to offer me a lower rate if I refinance or switch to them in addition to a 90-day delay in the first payment. So if you don't have any options for me, I've got to switch to them. Like, while I've been a very good, you can see from my record, long-time customer, I've been paying my bills, my hands are tied. It's, you know, I can't do more than that. I'm sorry, sorry, say what now? Leave it? Hold on. I Let me speak to my supervisor, and I'm going to see what I can do. Thank you. <laughs> now, guys, screenshot this, okay? All right. Thank you. Yeah, so, and then probably the supervisor, you can ask for somebody else. There's always a supervisor upon supervisor. Um, I've done this for folks, and uh, oftentimes it takes a minute, but it's so worth it at the end. Uh, you can do the same type of thing for your bills. Utilities are tough in a lot of normal scenarios. We're not negotiating our utilities, our cell phone per se, but check out to see if you qualify for different programs through utilities. I know that Duke Energy, for instance, um, has a special coronavirus program. You can also qualify for low, the low income program for utilities. So again, on my fancy worksheets, um, I have all the links so you will get those later to follow up so you can check in your specific area. You can also check with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, USA.gov. Uh, when it comes to internet, whistleout.com is something that you can check out for a comparison and just see what rates are like. Uh, really take a closer look at your cell phone because 
you might have an international plan, you might not be using as much data, so you could get a lower plan, but just take a closer look and see how much you're using to begin with. Uh, and then get to the cancellation department. Like what you just saw with Tiffany, get to the supervisor, get to the other supervisor. A lot of times at that point, folks freak out and they're like, no, 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 they're gonna call my bluff. Okay, well maybe they will, uh, but at any point, by the way, you can say, just kidding, psych. Um, I want to actually stay. So you could just play chicken to the very end, try to get as far as you possibly can, threaten to leave, because if you do not ask, the answer is always 100% no. So might as well ask. And I thought it would be nice to share some stories. If y'all have stories uh, of your negotiating experiences, let me know. But, you know, I have videos uh, where I put the uh, cell phone company on speaker so you can hear exactly what we're saying. I did one where I was in somebody's ear, like an earpiece. She went into a cell phone store and I was telling her exactly what to say. So there are ways and tricks to do this, um, but maybe it's helpful to hear from my girl Monica. She just sent me this DM before I came on with you guys, so I thought I would include it. Uh, negotiating was such a fun process. At first, I thought I was going to be shut down right away, but I decided to go for it. I started with my landlord. I'm never late on my rent, and I keep my place in good shape. So I told him that my business had been affected by COVID-19, and my potential clients have shut down their doors or decreased exponentially their expenses. So I asked for a break on my rent for the next three months so I can continue to provide for my family and live in a place we love. I never asked for a specific amount, leaving it open for negotiation, but then he gave me 50% off, a $1,300 discount, and I said, thank you very much, sir. But she didn't write that, I was ad-libbing. But um, she said, after that, I was on a roll. And here's what's happening. If you get one person, you become addicted to this. I'm telling you, as, as soon as it works once, this is what happened to Monica. She was like, okay, then I called two credit card companies. I increased my credit limit. I negotiated a better rate. I always pay my credit cards on time. So they worked with me, internet cable services. I had a flyer from a competitor and I asked for a match there. So $45 off their car and home rental insurance both under one provider, so I shopped around to the competition. She had some research on hand, some numbers, and she asked for a better price due to COVID. She got $65 off there. A little bit later on, I'm gonna tell you how much she got in total, but I am so proud of you, go Monica. So she mentioned uh, credit cards. She mentioned that she took a higher limit. You might think you, you don't want a higher limit, always take the higher limit and try to not spend very much for a high limit. So that helps your utilization score for your credit score uh, if we're thinking about that, I know we're, we said we're going to give ourselves a break right now, but always take a higher limit if that's an option for you. If you're going to max it out, don't take it, but you want more of a credit line. Uh, Amex, B of A, Capital One, Chase, City, Discover, a ton of them. Synchrony, they're the parent company, the credit card company of Lowe's and Sam's Club and all that. They all have specific programs. So again, I have links for all of them, but this is really specific. And then you wanna know what the competitors are doing so you can really use that as leverage, pit them against each other, ask for that limit increase, ask for fees waived, ask for reduced monthly minimums, demonstrate why you should get a lower rate. Of course, you know, Tiffany's been saying this forever and ever. Um, it's based on your credit score, so we all have a different APR. And if by the time you got the, credit card initially, and now you increase your credit score, you can tell them that, and they will recalculate it. Subscriptions. Okay, please, guys, tell me what random ass subscriptions you have found, because the one that I just found was the GoGo in-flight, which is the internet for the planes, and I used to live on planes, like I was running around doing all the book tour stuff, um, and so I had a subscription to the internet because that was cheaper. I just saw that come on my credit card. I was like, oh, I totally forgot about that subscription. So the way you don't forget about any of those subscriptions, even if it's so random, uh, like I, you could, I couldn't, like out of the hundred things you would have list, I would have listed of subscriptions I had, I wouldn't have thought of that. I would, I totally blanked on that. So create a balance sheet. You reconcile your spending. I have another worksheet for that. Trying to be trying to keep up with the budget needs to um, create a balance sheet where you have a list of everything that you have coming in and a list of everything you have going out. You got to reconcile that. So if they don't match, 
go back and look for something else. Was it the New York Times subscription? Was it the GoGo Inflict? Whatever it was, you forgot something. So no dollar left behind.